Hey adventurers, welcome back to the McDonald's Happy Readers Holiday Story Club for the very last reading of my new story written to give away with Happy Meals. It's called No Grown Ups Allowed, and yesterday Izzy and Benji landed in the town of Whiffington to find that all the grown ups had vanished. Sound familiar? Well, it is. If you missed it, you can catch up with part one on mcdonalds.co.uk forward slash family and join me for part two later. But if you're ready for part two now, stay put, let's go. Izzy woke up with a ray of sunshine shining in her face. She was still tired and her mouth was sticky and furry because she hadn't cleaned her teeth. But she felt a burst of excitement to find they were still in the van. They camped overnight after all, just like they wanted to. And in a world where there were no grown-ups and no rules. Izzy wasn't sure why, but now that the sun had come up, she wasn't as scared anymore. Funny how sunlight does that, isn't it? You can be scared stiff during the night, but as soon as it's daytime, you feel fine again. Beep! Beep! For a second, Izzy thought it was the van telling them it was time to go. But then she realised this beep was coming from outside. Leaving Benji snoring in the van, Izzy ran out to see what was going on. Beep! Beep! went the horn again. And a toy car zoomed past with three little boys inside. Three boys who looked like brothers. Who are you and what on earth are you doing? Izzy asked them. The boys burst into laughter. I'm Buzz and these are my brothers Buddy and Max, the biggest boy told her. We're going to go for a spin, Buddy said while Buzz and Max giggled mischievously. We're going to drive to Australia or France or maybe even Swindon. The boys beat the horn again and again. Beep, beep, beep. You can't go to Swindon in a toy car, Izzy told them. And stop beeping that horn. We can do whatever we want, Buzz said. Blah, boo, boo, agreed Baby Max. Come on, get out of that car or I'm going to tell... Izzy paused. The boys looked up at her. Who? asked Buzz, and the boys smiled with that cheeky smile people use when they know they can get away with something. Oh, said Izzy, suddenly realising there was absolutely nobody she could tell. Nobody to stop these boys doing whatever they wanted. She was on her own, and she had to stop them from leaving Whiffington, or goodness knows what trouble they'd get into. The boys started honking the horn again. Beep, beep, beep. Izzy reached into the car and grabbed the horn from Buddy. Oi, that's our dad's horn from his bike, Buzz said. You can't take it, it's stealing. That gave Izzy an idea. Exactly, it's your dad's. What's going to happen when he gets back and you're in Swindon, she said. Unless you think your dad is never coming back, she added. Buzz's face changed suddenly. Of course he's coming back, he insisted. Buzz... Buddy tugged on his brother's sleeve. We can't go anywhere. We've got to wait for Mum and Dad to come back. OK, Buzz agreed. Good, said Izzy. And when your dad comes back, you can tell him to come and pick up his horn from me. Until then, I'll look after it. Some kids are trying to sleep, you know. And with that, Izzy popped the horn into her pocket. She was just about to head back inside the van when she heard someone calling her name from further up the street. Izzy! Izzy! I need your help! It was Ralph, waving at her. Benji appeared at the door of the van, rubbing his eyes sleepily. Oh, I'm hungry, he said. Come on, Ralph needs us, Izzy told him. We can find something for breakfast afterwards. They followed Ralph, who led them inside a nearby house. I didn't know what to do, he told them. He took them into the kitchen where a familiar little girl had got herself wedged next to the washing machine. We were playing hide and seek, Ralph explained. And I won, Ella cried. To be fair, everyone else had stopped playing and gone to bed, Ralph said. So I won, Ella crowed. I guess so, technically, Izzy said. Yes, I'm the best, Ella cheered as Izzy grabbed her arm and tried to pull her out. Ella was wedged tight. But with both Ralph and Izzy heaving, and lots of muffled complaining from Ella, she finally came out with a pop. Whew, right, time for breakfast, Izzy said. Ah, yes, agreed Benji, rubbing his hungry tummy. But before they could look for food, they heard another voice calling out, Help! 
Izzy and Benji sighed and quickly headed in the direction of the child in need. By the time they'd helped that one, there was another one, then another, and another, followed by even more. Three separate kids had lost their shoes, seven had got glue stuck in their hair, one had managed to paint herself purple, even in her belly button, and every single child wanted Izzy and Benji to help them. One boy had even climbed inside a toy grabbing machine to get the toy he wanted. Unfortunately, now he couldn't get back out again. Now, the only way to free him would be to put some money in the machine and try to win him, but since there were no grown-ups around to give the children pocket money, he had no choice but to stay there. A girl had released three sharks into the public swimming pool and tried opening a small aquarium. One whole street had its pavements replaced with trampolines. Four children had accidentally flushed themselves down the toilet, clogging up the pipes of the rest of the town. This is crazy, Izzy said, looking at the chaos surrounding them, when suddenly they heard a whisper. It's them, hissed the voice excitedly. They're the ones that know what to do. There was a rustle, and the leaves on the tree above them parted. A group of children emerged, clambering down from the branches like wild monkeys. Izzy counted six of them, all incredibly dirty, their clothes ragged and torn. As they swung down from the branches to the pavement, one of the wild children nudged another and said, Ask them, go on. The boy was shoved closer to Izzy and Benji. We want our mummies and daddies back. P please help us, the filthy child said. His wild eyes suddenly large and worried so that he looked like a sad kitten. Food, another one whispered, crouching beside the tree. And food, said the first child. Do you have anything to eat? Izzy looked at Benji. Things had gone from bad to worse. Suddenly, Whiffington wasn't so much fun anymore. The novelty of having no grown-ups around was wearing off and fast. Right, Izzy took charge. She led the children back into Ella's house and opened the fridge. I can make cheese sandwiches for everyone. She and Benji started to make them and the wild children tore into them like starving animals. That's my cheese, Ella said grumpily. I think your mum and dad would want us to use it to help everyone, don't you? Izzy said. Ella just sniffed, but when Izzy handed her a sandwich, she started to eat it gratefully. As soon as Izzy had munched down a sandwich herself, she began to feel better. Now that we've eaten, we have to find a way to get the grown-ups back, she said to Benji. But how, he asked. Izzy looked around the room until she found the person she was looking for. In a corner, miserably eating a sandwich, was Ralph. Izzy went over to him. What happened to the grown-ups, she asked quietly. You know, don't you? We have to get them back. These kids are tired and hungry, and they need their families back. Ralph's bottom lip wobbled. It was just supposed to be a joke. I, I don't even know how I did it. Did what? Izzy said. I wrote it on the sign, Ralph wailed. I wrote no grown-ups aloud on the Whiffington sign. With a magic crayon, I got in a joke shop, and it came true, and uh, I want my daddy. With that, poor Ralph burst into tears. That crayon really must have been magic, said Benji in awe, and Izzy nodded. What's that? You've never heard of a magic crayon before? Well, 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 there are lots more magical things around than you might realise. Some are big and powerful, like a time-travelling van. Others are small, like an enchanted sock that never gets smelly, a toaster that grants wishes, or a crayon that makes whatever it writes come true. You never know where you might find magic, so you should always look out for it, just in case. Deal? Deal. What did you do with the crayon? Izzy asked. Ralph took it out of his pocket. It looked like an ordinary yellow crayon, but as Izzy peered at it, she felt a tingle in her tummy that told her it was something magical. To the sign, she yelled. She and Benji led the way with all the children of Whiffington following behind. The sign looked exactly as it did when Izzy and Benji first arrived. It read, Welcome to Whiffington, with no grown-ups allowed, scrawled under it in yellow crayon. Carefully, Izzy used the same crayon to scribble over the word no until it couldn't be seen anymore. Soon the sign read, Welcome to Whiffington, 
grown-ups allowed. Izzy held her breath. Benji held his breath. Even I'm holding my breath. Are you? Well, you can let it out with a great big... <sighs> because there, coming down the road towards Riffington, looking a bit confused, were the town's grown-ups. All the children started running towards their parents and grandparents, leaping into their arms for big hugs. Izzy spotted Buzz, Buddy and Max clinging to the legs of a friendly-looking mum and dad. Izzy grinned and threw Buzz his dad's bike horn. Ella's mum scooped her up. Oh, Ella, what happened? I feel like I've had a very strange dream. I've missed you so much and... What are you wearing? Is that my wedding dress? Oh, Ralphie! Two men ran over to Ralph and swept him up in an enormous hug. Dad! Daddy! he cried out. As he snuggled into their hug, he grinned at Izzy and Benji. All the kids started talking at once. I stayed up all night! It was brilliant! I painted my bedroom bright green! Uh, there might be some sharks in the swimming pool! Among all the chatter, Izzy and Benji heard a familiar sound. This time, it was the man's horn beeping. Leaving the kids and grown-ups still hugging each other, they crept away. Izzy couldn't wait to see her own mum and dad. She even thought she wouldn't mind hearing the voice. The van dropped them back to the very second they'd left. Benji grabbed his dinosaur duvet and they both ran back inside, yawning tiredly. It was good to be home. Great, Izzy's mum said as they came in. Now, if you really want to, you can camp in the van at the weekend. Izzy glanced at Benji. No, it's okay, she said, giving her mum a big hug. Mum squeezed her back, then kissed her on the top of her head. Honestly, I will never understand you two, she exclaimed. Can I call my mum and say good night? Benji asked. I really miss her. Oh, of course, Benji, said mum, but just a quick chat and then into bed. Night, Izzy, Benji said, giving her a hug. Night, Benji, Izzy said as she went up to her room. It was so nice to be home. Izzy couldn't wait to brush her teeth and get into her own bed. Grown-ups were annoying, but they were kind of nice to have around too. Well, there we go. I hope your holiday was as full of adventure and magic as Izzy's and Benji's. And remember, children have the best magic because you have imaginations and can create wonderful adventures in your heads. Thank you so much for listening. I would love to hear what you think. And remember, all the adventures of Izzy and Benji are available now with McDonald's Happy Meals. Oh, three beeps. Time for me to go. Bye.